Whenever you find yourself writing ROS programs, you'll always have to print something to the terminal to see what is going on. If you have a variable that is supposed to hold something, let's say this variable is supposed to hold 7, you would like to see if it, it actually holds 7. One of the simplest ways to do that is to use the print line macro. To print it, you can say A is equal to. When you run that code, you get A is equal to 7. And that gives you some assurance that it's working. Now, you will notice what I did here. Here, I used a specifier, which is just an opening and closing curly braces. It's like a placeholder that I get to fill in later on. I can add as many of it as I want and then add the values here. If I had another variable, let's say this one is set to 10, I could then specify it here. And then if I run it again, oh sorry, this one has to be B. And if I run it again, I will get A is equal to 7 and let's say B is equal to You get b is equal to 10 perfect now this is just a very simple scenario there are many of it you can you can use print print as well the print macro to do it okay the problem with the print is that it's just going to print them in in one line let's say we duplicate that one and then we run the code you see that they're all printed in one line. This one started from here and ended at 10. And then the other one started from here. So for the most part, I use the print line. Print ln and then this bank sign. Okay. Now, one thing you will notice here is that this is actually a macro and not a function and not a function that you call. Okay. You usually detect macro by this bank sign that is be, uh, beside them. I'm going to explain how macros work in a later video. But macros are similar to functions in certain ways, but they're actually more powerful than functions. For example, functions, you are limited to the parameters that the function has defined. However, for macro, you can create your macro in such a way that you can have more than, you can see that we can add as many as we want here, but you can't do that with functions. So I'll make a special video for macros. So get subscribed so that you get notified whenever I release that video. Now, for very simple variables like uh, integers, strings, and all that, you can easily get away with doing it this way. Now, for simple variables like what we did here, we won't have problems printing them to the terminal. For some variables, it's not just going to work. It's not that simple. Let's say you have a variable that you call point, and it's a tuple that contains two values, three and then five. Now, if you decide to print this to the terminal like this, we say point is equal to, and then we say point. If we run that code, once you run the code, we start getting errors. And you'll see what it says here. It says, tuple of integer and integer doesn't doesn't implement the standard format display okay so this is a threat that if you want to use this print line okay whatever you are printing must implement that trait and tuple doesn't implement that trait okay so what you do is to change the specifier you can simply add colon and question mark inside this curly braces and then if you run it now You get the topo which makes sense so all you had to do was change the specifier by using this uh, colon and question mark okay now this also works for tuples and arrays and all that but it doesn't work for strokes now i'll show you an example so now we have this user struct if we have a user with her name and an ID like this and we decide to print that user to the terminal
it's not going to allow that if you run that code Rust will panic and say user this user struct doesn't implement the bug okay so for structs you must implement structs must implement the debug thread in order for it to be printable okay so to do that all we have to do is to use the derived attribute okay by saying we add this hash symbol to define the attribute and then we use the derived attribute and say it will implement the debug thread and that error is now gone now if we run that code we we'll get user equal to user we had the name is here and then the idea is this perfect so it's all about knowing what to use and when to use it for simple variables you can print them with that, with this specifier but if you need something more then you have to use this one and if you want to print a struct the struct itself has to implement the debug thread so this is actually an attribute okay i will make a special video about attributes later on to explain how they work okay we have different types of attributes so get subscribed so that you know when i release that video this is so this is one way to automatically implement this debug thread for this struct so that you can print them to the terminal so another way of printing stuff to the terminal as you write your code is by using the dbg macro okay so you can just print anything and you get whatever you printed to the terminal you can see something different with the print ln okay whatever you type in is going to print it and then it will say it's equal to something and it will also give you the line of the code where it was printed for example here it's on line 2 so it's also giving you the name of the file and the directory and then also the line so this is a little bit more specific okay it's actually a macro just like the print line the major difference is that this macro will assume ownership of whatever variable is using okay let's say we have a variable that we call name which is a string this is a string and then we set it to henry now if we print this to the console Now if we, if we print that to the terminal, you see it will say name equal to Henry. Okay. But now it has taken ownership of this variable name. If we decide to reuse it somewhere else, like If you run that code it is a value borrowed here after moved okay so it's a way of telling you that this dbg macro has already assumed ownership of this name and you are now trying to change it to modify it okay even if it's a mutable variable because it was supposed to be a mutable variable it will still keep warning you here value moved here okay move or call because name has type strange it does not implement the copy thread now we are moving it and not copying it if this was to be the print line macro it wouldn't have been a problem you see the error is gone in fact if you run that code there won't be any problem it is it is still say print uh, it is still say name equal to henry okay now that is the major difference between dbg and print line now you might be thinking that it's better to use print line every single time that might be the case but another benefit the bug uh, this uh, dbg macro has is that it returns whatever the variable it uses okay but one benefit that the dbg macro has is that it returns what it prints let's say it prints this num to the terminal 
okay you can still get access to that name and therefore after printing it to the terminal it will return still return ownership of this value and then you can come down here and still have access to it by clearing it and if you run this code you see that it's still printed name is equal to Henry over here and also returned the ownership which is used here in fact you can see that more clearly if we decide to create a new user okay let's say we have a user called the user one and it's gonna be of type user and we'll set it to a new user and the name will be John and then the ID will be anything while we are assigning John to name we can as well print it to the terminal using the DBG macro let's push this to the other line now you notice that it's as if you are calling this dbg macro and whatever is returning you are signing it into them okay now if we run this code the way it is now you get john dot to strange is equal to john so what it did here is that this value was printed to the terminal as well as returned and assigned to this name and in fact if we decide to print this to the terminal again using print line if we print that user one and we say it's equal to user one if you run that you see that this is user one and this is what it holds it holds john okay so dbg macro printed this value to the terminal here by saying john does to string is equal to john and also returned john which we then assign to this name so that is the major difference between the dbg macro and then the print line macro so you decide you decide which one to use when coding now it, most times printing stuff to the console printing stuff to the terminal is not really the best way to test code and that is why in vs code you have this run command and also this debug command which you can use now this allows you to debug a ROS code which i use most of the time in fact when i build serious stuff i hardly print anything to the terminal because once you start having a lot of codes printing stuff to the terminal will be a little bit uh, tedious okay because you have to keep printing on a lot of things and then you have to keep removing even them and all that so what i do is i use breakpoints so right here on line 7 i can add a breakpoint so what i do is we click ctrl f8 and that will add this breakpoint so i'm using key binance for intellij that was why i was able to use ctrl f8 that is how it's done in intellij i'm not quite sure how vs code does that but you can really find that out or you can click right here beside these numbers and then it will add breakpoints there okay if you hover over it you can add a breakpoint there now breakpoints are so easy to use okay and makes the coding experience a lot easier for example let's see what we do here i will debug this code by clicking on this debug button after adding a breakpoint so what debugging simply means is you add the uh, breakpoints in many places around your code and when the code execution gets to that point instead of printing that to the terminal for example it will stop and then you can inspect whatever it is you have here and that is what we are going to do now so if i click on the bug if you're on vs code it will ask you to install certain things in order for it to work okay whatever it tells you to install just go ahead and install them and you'll be good Okay, now we are done with the installations let's try it again okay it will bring out all of this and then it will stop uh, the code execution when it gets to this breakpoint and let me show you around what is going on here first of all you can see that this dbg macro has printed whatever it needed to print here 
in this run terminal and you can see it here okay it will open a new bash script terminal and then it will print whatever it has to print here now but the code has stopped here at this breakpoint right at the right hand side you will see a few things first of all on top right here you're going to see how to continue the debugging how to step over how to step into i'm going to make a separate video about this debugging so get subscribed so you get notified because this is very very important and knowing how to use these debug features will make your life a lot easier down here you see the call stack this is like the debug trees which will show you what called what and what called what till you get to this point okay most times you use this for uh, deep debugging to understand what is going on and then this is the console now down here you can see down here you can see the breakpoints all the breakpoints we've added in the code you can see them here in this debug panel okay they're all stacked together you can actually move them around if you want for example I've moved it to this panel you can then in this panel you can add watch commands so for example if you have a variable and you have a very big code base I want to watch how that variable has changed over time and what it is at some point you can click on this button and add that for example if you want to watch user1 you can just type it there and click it and then it will show you user1 okay and it will keep it will keep it here if it changes you get to know okay now up here you see the variables these are all the variables in the code you can see that that actually divided here you have the local variables which is for example this user one we only have one variable here okay then you have the static variables you have the global variables and the registers okay these are like the registers that ross is working with you see the general purpose registers the floating point registers the advanced vector extension if you open them you will see all these registers have been occupied okay we'll go into details explaining this uh, later on but for now let's focus on what we are doing here to continue with the code i will hit f9 to continue and then we are done with it and then i will hit f uh, alt 5 to clear to close that debug terminal okay using the intellij bindings and and for this terminal i'll use alt f2 f to clean to close it let me show you something let's say you have a variable that you called name and then you set it to let's say john okay and then you debug that code by hitting this debug button now let's inspect what name is you see that name is John but if you open it up it will show you these things 74 111 and all that they look like an array of arrays what is going on here is that this John has been stored in the memory as bytes which represent each character okay and then these are the UTF-8 encoded value of each of these strings okay now as you know if you this, since this is a string slice if you compile this code this will be stored in the binary however for a user right here for this user variable each of these values will be stored in the heap because they are actually strings okay so this will represent what will be stored in the heap so we'll go into that later on but this is also another way to debug your code so it's no longer just about printing debugging is even better than printing in many ways and for our subsequent videos we'll be using it a lot more often so that's it guys for today subscribe so that you get notified when we release new videos we are going to be going into more detailed and more complex rust tutorials and more complex rust features in the nearest future so get subscribed and then like the video Thank you.